we're here to prove that Jesus Christ only came to die for the nation of Israel, which you so-called blacks and Hispanics, nobody else. This was prophesied from the beginning, and it didn't change when we get to the so-called New Testament. All right, let's go. This is the book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. Now, my brothers, listen, up, listen to this, right? We was all taught that Jesus Christ came to die for everybody, all right? The Bible's going to tell you opposite. We're going to prove everything with the Bible. Go ahead. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So remember, the, the, Peter said we ought to obey God, which is the words of God in this Bible, over men. So if men are saying something contrary to the Bible, who should we listen to? God or, or that man? There you go. Now check this out. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slung slew and hang on the tree. Go ahead. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. So this, he's going to be a prince and a savior to who? For to give repentance to Israel. To who? To Israel. Hold on. Does it say all nations? To Israel. No, but it says the whole world. To Israel. Go ahead. And forgiveness of sin. So right there you heard in the Bible yourself that Jesus Christ was sent to die for his people. Who was his people? The so-called blacks and Hispanics on this earth. Right. All right? Nobody else fits that description. Come on over here. Let me show you something real quick. And, you're, and look, is that your daughter? Yes. Your daughter already knew that Christ was a black man, which is a beautiful thing. Right. That's a beautiful thing because a lot of our people don't know that. I grew up thinking that Jesus Christ was a, a blonde-haired, Caucasian man with blue eyes and real soft and effeminate. Right? right? That's what I was taught. But we never find that in the Bible. Hey, sis, come on. Let me show you something. Hey, sis. Let me show you something real quick. Check this out. The reason why we're out here is to compel our people. When I say our people, I mean our people. We didn't go to short pump. We didn't go to the areas where the Arabs are. We go to our people like the Bible says. That's what God says. What would your father be? Would he be a so-called African-American, a Jamaican, a Haitian, an Indian? What would he be according to that sign? You said American blacks? Okay, good. So according to the Bible, get, get numbers 1 to 18. Everything we're going to say, sis, is going to come right from the Bible, all right? We're not your Christian pastor where you can't ask questions. We're out here so people can ask questions according to the Bible. That's why we're here, all right? So we're going to prove to you that you do come from the tribe of Judah, the same, the same tribe that Christ came from. You know how much power that is? That means the same blood that ran through Christ's body is running through your body and running through your daughter's body right now, all right? This is the book of Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. I'll check this out. And they assembled all the congregation together on the fir first day of the second month. Okay. And they declared their pedigrees. Now, it says they declared their pedigrees, their lineage, after their families okay. by the house of their father. So what, what determines your nationality or your race is your father because he carries the seed. My brother, how you doing? That's what I'm talking about. So what would you be? Would you be a so-called African-American by your father? What would you be? I'm born there. A what? I'm a born ass. A born ass? I'm born. A bo I am. Huh? I'm gender. Gender, okay, cool, cool. Gender. So like I said, sis, your father determines that. So according to the according to the Bible, you descend from the tribe of Judah. Alright, let's get that real quick. I'm gonna prove everything with the Bible. Mama. Hebrews, you got it? Where are babies? Go to Mama Hebrews real quick. Go ahead, go. Mama Mama you said what? Your mama has babies? Mama has babies. That's that's true. Now where did the seed come from? Who raised you? Right, right, yeah, where did the seed come from? Before a woman has a baby, what has to happen? There you go. And what happens when you make love? What happens from the man? What happens from the man? There you go. Go into the woman. So that's the seed. Now, sis, check this out. I'm going to show you who you are according to the Bible. Check this out. Yes, sir. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. Now, remember, you said you're from the tribe of Judah, correct? You my That's what you said. For it is evident. Come over here, bro. Check this out. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Now, our Lord is Jesus Christ. He said he sprang out of Judah, so he came from the tribe of Judah. You ever heard of Jesus Christ, the Lion of Judah? Because he came through the same thing. All right? Now, check. Go to uh, Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you that our history was documented in the Bible thousands of years ago. Let me ask you this. Our people, how did the so-called African American, to hell with the Quran. How did our people get Hello. over here to America? I'm black. I ain't black enough. Are you a Mormon? How did our people get over here? They took us from where we was at. They took us from where we are and how, what mode of transportation was. In the end. By boat. By what? Boat. Now, if I tell you it's in the Bible, would you believe me? It's in there. You already know it? Yeah. So you know that. So you know. Let's go ahead. Let's go over real quick. You know. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 68. Now we're going over the mode of transportation on how the so-called African-American got over here. All right? 
We're going to prove it to the Bible because this was written thousands of years ago. Go ahead. We are. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It says the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Because remember, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt the first time through the wilderness, right? Now he's talking to him in the wilderness. He said, if you keep my commandments, you're going to be blessed. If you break my commandments, you're going to be cursed. Let's pick up on the curses. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So we're going to get the definition of Egypt, all right? Give me Deut Deuteronomy 5. Stay in the same book. Deuteronomy 5, verse 6. All right, we're going to stay in the same book to get you the definition because the Bible explains itself. 5 and 6. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5 and verse 6. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So remember, sis, he said, I brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Go ahead. From the house of bondage. So out of the house of bondage because Egypt is synonymous with bondage. Because the Israelites served as slaves under the Egyptians. They were not on the same level. All right? Now go back to Deuteronomy 28. Why are you going to do that? You said what? Okay. That's what I'm talking about. And this is, th this is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28 and verse 68. Hey, brother, we out here for you. Come on back. And the Lord sprang... And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It says the Lord's going to bring you back into slavery again. Go ahead. With yeah. ship. With what? With ship. So God prophesied your history according to the Bible a thousand years ago. Yeah, he said if we broke the laws of God, we would be put in on slave ships and shipped to another part of the world. But that's not it. Let's go. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Go ahead. And there. And there, once you get off of those ships in a strange land. Ye shall be sold unto your enemy. God said, once you get off these slave ships, you're going to be sold unto your enemies. Bring that to that. Your enemies. Bring that so let that. me ask you this. Who are we sold to, sis? The future. The, the, Europeans. the who? Europeans. The Europeans. So let's read that part again, though. So the Europeans would be what to us? Read that again. Nobody. You should be sold. And ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So who are the Europeans? Enemies. There you go. Thus saith the Bible. Right. Keep going. For bond men, slave men, and bond women, slave women, and no man shall buy you. We can't be redeemed by a man, all right? Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Chief Hartway, all these famous leaders that rose up for, for our cause, they tried their best, but they couldn't save us. Only person that's going to be able to save us from this captivity is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, all right? He's going to be the one to come back and deliver us. Like the same way he delivered the children of Egypt, I mean the children of Israel out of Egypt, the same way we're going to be delivered out of this hellhole America. Because this is not our home. This is not our home, all right? Right? If this is our home, this is the worst thing we got. Look no, at the way we live. No, no. Let me ask y'all this. Jesus. Why is it that y'all don't live in Short Pump? Why don't our people populate Stony Point or Rivers Bend? All these other nice places. Why don't our people populate those areas? Why is it? What, what you say? It was You said what? It was ours. They was ours. What happened? Money. They, they came and did what? Sis, go ahead and say it. They took it from us. Even the sister knows that. Right. This is, a, this, is a, this is a wise sister right here, all right? I'm glad she understands that. We do have enemies among us. That's right. if, if, if they was our friends, let me ask you this. If, if the so-called Caucasian man and all these other nations were our friends, when they stole the land from us and take things from us, according to the Bible, they should give it back, correct? Because they always say the white man's a good Christian, right? The white man, if he's a good Christian, should give the land back to the Native American man, right. all right? The white man should give the land back to Brazil. Or back to, or, or, or back to uh, Mexico. All these other places that we populated, they should give it back according to the Bible. But we understand that that man is not, he's not of the Bible. He's of the devil, okay? Give me Revelation chapter 1. This is one of the biggest, this is the biggest lie that is taught. All right? We all grew up under Christianity, the, the mindset of God loves everybody. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. This is the book of Revelation. Chapter 1 and verse 1. And this is where the brainwashing starts. Because once they held us captives, then they changed things. Go ahead. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revealing of Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Which God gave unto him. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. It says his head and his hairs were white like wool. We understand what nation of people has woolly hair, sis. Okay. It's, no. Us? You asking me? Let me ask you this, sis. What is the what is the texture of wool? When you think of a sheep, what is that? That's wool. That's the texture of wool, right? So what do they look like? What does that look like? Oh, there you look at look at this right here. Look at the sister here right here. Look at the brother here right here. That's what he has. All of the nations don't have that. That was given to us because we're God's chosen people. Go ahead. As white as snow. Right. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet. And his what? 
at his feet. Now, sis, I can see your feet, right? I can see the color of your feet. If I look at the color of your feet, for the most part, it's going to match the color of your legs, the color of your arms, and the color of your face, correct? So we're looking at Jesus Christ's feet. At his feet, like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. There you go, sis. As if they burn in a furnace. So where do we get this description of Christ being a, a Caucasian man? Where do we get the description of the angels or the prophets being? There you go, sis. Bring it out. This is what we're talking about. We're here to teach our people what the Bible actually says because you don't find equality in the Bible. There's no such thing as all nations are on the same level. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Everything we say, we're going to prove it. If you have any questions, please come up and ask. That's why we're out here. All right? We're here for our people. Who's going to fight for our cause? Anytime we, anytime we march for something, we let all of the other nations or any other thing come in. Here's another part. Look, you got police running through your neighborhood all the time. I was just talking to the officer earlier. You don't see this going on in the other communities, right? You don't see them patrolling their communities. You know why? Because they're not breaking laws all day. They're not doing that. But read that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6. Now here, I'm going to show you all according to the Bible. There's no such thing as equality. There's no such thing as all races are equal, right. according to the Bible. Let's go. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Right. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So God said the children of Israel are a holy and special people. All right? Anything that's special or holy, you separate it from everything else. That's what the word holy means. Go ahead. He says, check this out. Above. He said the children of Israel are what? Above. All people that are upon the face of the earth. What did God just say about the children of Israel? The ones that you descend from. He said they're what? Above. Above all people. Above you, ever, you ever heard that, sis? You ever heard that in the Bible? That we was above, that you so-called blacks and Spanish are above every other nation? We don't, get, we don't get taught that in church. But this is this. What Bible are you reading? King James Version. The same version that everybody has in their, in their closet collecting dust. The same version that grandma has. The same version that's in your churches right now. The same one that everybody says they, they swear to God they read. But they always omit stuff like this. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. 